guys, how are you? Happy Thursday. Um, my phone screen is all cracked, so I can't really see myself that well, but that's okay. I don't really need to. Um, how are you? I'm so excited uh, to be making this a regular habit and getting to you guys live and talking about important health topics so you can renew your health, reawaken your healthiest self, and just feel really good and and better. You all deserve to feel better every single day. One of the ways that you can do that is to sleep. And I know sleep um, can be that evasive thing, right, where there's just not enough time in the day to do everything you want to do. And then if you have kids, you want to put the kids down, then you want to hang out with your partner. The next thing you know, it's 11, and you have to be up by 5, and... You're not getting enough sleep, so then you're going through your day feeling crappy and not rested enough. And if you don't sleep, your body does not function optimally. If you want to have, you know, even like weight loss, if you don't sleep enough, you're, you're never going to lose the weight you want to lose. It's plain and simple. Um, if you want to have a good immune system, you're not going to have it if you don't sleep enough. If you want to have glowing skin, right, or balanced hormones, or healthy digestion. Sleep is literally what we need to restore every single night. And so if we don't sleep, your body is never going to function optimally. It's just it's just not what's going to happen. So to me, sleep is, you know, if I have a new patient coming in and they're, they want to do X, Y, and Z and, you know, help them do this or do that, if they're not sleeping well, that's the first thing I need to address immediately because anything I try to do to help their health if the sleep isn't in place, nothing's really going to work. So we got to fix the sleep first. Um, yeah, this is a very common thing, Rose. I go to bed early, but I just can't sleep. So things that, you know, number one, ideally we're getting seven to eight hours of solid sleep every single night. And even in Chinese medicine, we say if you're sleeping but you're having a lot of dreams that you remember, it's not very restful sleep. So we would like less dreams and especially less stressful dreams. They're very happy, joyful dreams. They, they kind of rank a little better in Chinese medicine. But the, the stressful, like running to appointments, running from something, dangerous dreams – Definitely not getting good restful sleep. So we want to, you know, what we say in Chinese medicine is calm the spirit. Um, that will allow for better sleep. Another thing that we focus on in Chinese medicine is that we say something like, if there's not enough blood in the body, which is really common for women because we have a monthly menstrual cycle and we give up blood every month. So I'll get to that in a second. But if you don't have enough blood... We say there's no place for the spirit to rest because in Chinese medicine, the, the theory goes that the spirit um, rests in your blood. And so if there's not enough blood in your system, you don't get restful sleep at night. Or, you you know, similar to, to what Rose said, you can fall asleep, but you can't stay asleep um, or it's very restful sleep. There's always an issue with blood or just fluid and substance in your body. So things that could really help you get more restful sleep is eating a very balanced diet and one that contains lots of good healthy fats and animal proteins I think is really important. Um, starting your day off with protein, so within the first 20 to 30 minutes of waking that you're having a small amount of protein. It could be three almonds, a scoop of nut butter, sunflower butter, a bit of hummus, um, some, I'll do some coconut milk, full-fat coconut milk in my coffee. That has more fat than protein, but um, this you need some substance, right? Something like an egg um, right upon waking that will actually help regulate your blood sugar. And if you start your day off like that, believe it or not, that will positively impact your sleep that night. And then what you need to do is be eating some sort of protein, like two to three ounces, you know, just a small amount, um, about every three hours throughout your day. So each meal should have some protein. And protein is like chicken, it's eggs, it's fish, it's it's beans, it's nuts, that type of thing, right? So make sure protein is in every meal. And if you're, you know, like most people where you can fall asleep but you can't stay asleep, then you need to have a little bit of protein before bed. It's kind of like that old wives' tale of having a glass of more milk to help you sleep. The... um 
the milk has fat and protein, so it really helps regulate your blood sugar. And if your blood sugar is not regulated, you won't sleep well throughout the night. So what I usually recommend is the same thing as you do in the morning, like three almonds, a couple Brazil nuts are great. Um, you know, and if you can't do nuts, you could do sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds, something that has some protein in it. And, and you could do, too, you could do that warm glass of milk. Um, make sure your dairy products are always full fat and organic if you tolerate dairy well. If you don't, you could do a nut milk. You could do coconut milk. And just to have, you know, and we're talking about literally like, like three nuts or a quarter cup of a nut milk or regular milk or a half a cup. It's not, sorry, I have something in my eye. It's not a lot, lot to, you know, add a ton of calories. I know people are worried about eating right before bed because they're going to gain weight. It's more about regulating that blood sugar. But the key is you have to start your day off with protein within that first really 30 minutes of waking. And then, you know, um, hi, Sloan. I'll get to that in just a second. And then and finishing your day with protein as well. That way you can regulate your blood sugar and get it throughout the day. Um, here's an aside. Um, talk about full fat. Why is full fat best? Because anything that's not full fat is actually, you know, synthetically manipulated. Um, they, you know, so if we're talking about dairy products, if you're doing 1%, 0%, uh, 2%, basically all the fat particles are removed and then, um, you know, separate it out, and then like 2% of the fat is added back in, and then they add in synthetic vitamins to make up for the vitamins that they removed when they removed the fat. Milk, anything full fat, you know, that, that gets defatted, I mean, the fat is there as uh, an essential component for you to be able to absorb all of the nutrients in that product. So if you go and take out the fat, you you... Um, manipulate the product and you're not going to absorb the nutrition the, the best way. So if you want to get the biggest bang for your buck from your foods, do not manipulate it at all. Take it as it is, right? You know, when you're eating the egg, eat the whole egg, right? When you're, you know, don't skip the yolk, especially, um, you know, when you're, you know, with coconut milk too, you want to eat the full fat coconut milk. You don't want coconut milk light or anything like that. You want the full fat. Same thing with, with regular milk. You want full fat and preferably when it comes to dairy, non-homogenized because when they homogenize the dairy, they actually break up the fat particles so that the milk looks prettier. That's the only reason it's there is it's for, for the milk to look prettier. But when they do that to cow's milk, it actually changes the fat particles and you don't absorb them the right way. So you don't get all the nutrition from it, even if it's full fat. Um, so just to keep all that in mind. But So getting back to sleep. So how can we... Get to sleep and stay asleep. So I've already addressed the blood sugar. Super, super duper important. A lot of us will go more than three hours between meals, and that really screws with your blood sugar. And that, that screwy blood sugar will affect feelings of anxiety, feelings of restlessness, and for sure feelings of um, sleep or restless sleep, insomnia, anything like that. I always kind of make a jest or a joke in my clinic that, 90% of my anxiety or insomnia patients are really just, I just need to regulate their blood sugar. It's, it has nothing, there's no actual clinical thing going on. They just need to eat more regularly and protein and full fat foods, right? So your diet should really just consist of protein, fat, veggies, and some fruit. That's it. I would limit grains, definitely no sugar, nothing processed, nothing packaged, nothing chemically laden, um, really basic, simple diet. Oh, another good thing you could do right before sleep is a little bit of bone broth. That's great. Lots of fat, lots of protein. So you could just sip a little bone broth, you know, like a half a cup, a half a mug. Um, it would be phenomenal for your sleep because there's also essential minerals that are, you know, minerals tend to be heavier substances. So we see them as sedating. So that's why things like calcium and magnesium help before sleep as well. So that leads me to another great tool for helping with your sleep is magnesium oil. I know magnesium is getting it's a lot of popularity right now. And you can buy, um, I think Ancient Minerals is the brand that I like on Amazon. You can buy their magnesium oil, follow the directions. I think it's just a couple sprays on the softer part of your skin. You massage it in before bed. Magnesium is a natural sedative, and it will help you rest at night. What I'm doing 
One of my dear friends makes her own magnesium oil, and there's tons of recipes online to see how to do it. You just get the magnesium flakes, and I think you dissolve them in water, and voila, you have your own magnesium oil. And so now I'm adding, my husband has some sleep issues, so we're adding some calming essential oils to his magnesium oil. So I did, I have it right here, um, I did lemongrass, lavender, and frankincense, and clary sage. They're all good sedating essential oils. So you could just keep it simple. Just get some lem uh, lavender and some clary sage. You could massage it into the bottom of your feet at night, or you could do what I'm doing and add like, you know, sort of two ounces of magnesium oil, add like 10 drops of each essential oil. So 10 drops of lavender, 10 drops of clary sage. Mix it up. Spray that on yourself before bed, and that will really help give you more restful sleep. Another reason people don't sleep well is, as we say in Chinese medicine, they go to bed with their demons. Um, so you know you're this person if you clench your teeth at night, which a lot of people do. So if you're a grinder or a clencher, in Chinese medicine, that's always a flag to us that you have some unresolved emotions. You are going to bed with, you know, we call it, because this point is called... Um, you, you know, I for, oh my God, I'm totally blanking on the, the translation of the point, but it's something demon. Um, oh my God, what is it called? Anyway, it, it, but so basically it's when you are clenching, there's, you know, in, in the way we diagnose in Chinese medicine, it tells us that you're kind of going to sleep with heavy thoughts on your mind. You know, like demons is, a, is an aggressive word, but just that sense of like things that are really stressing you out, things that are really worrying you. And that can be very disruptive to sleep. So what I find clinically what works best, and it sounds very trite, but it, it works, is before you go to sleep to journal, like five things that you're going to sleep with, that you're taking to bed with you. Write them out and, and give yourself permission to let them go until the next day. So I'm worried about, you know, this bill I have to pay, or I'm worried about this deadline at work, or I'm worried about, you know, um, XYZ that's going on with my child or XYZ that's going on with my career or my husband's career or my partner's career, whatever it is, write it out, you know, and I think too in that moment, hand it over, trust that the universal forces will come in and support you, but let it go and let yourself get your sleep and, and actually say to yourself like, I need the restful sleep so I can wake up tomorrow and, and tackle this, right? I So I want to let this go for now and I'm going to I'm going to pick it up tomorrow. I promise I'll pick it back up. But I'm going to let it go for now so I can get some sleep. So literally taking the time to sit, journal, tune in. Another great place to do this that also will help with sleep is taking a hot Epsom salt bath. Epsom salts are magnesium as well. So going back to that magnesium, it's a natural relaxant. It's very soothing. You can put a little lavender in the bathtub. You don't have to soak for long. I know our schedules get busy and life is hectic as hell, but give yourself 10 minutes in the tub to just soak. Think about the things that are on your mind. Give yourself permission to let them go. Kind of do a little ritual of some sort, like I let this go for now so I can have a restful sleep. Boom, boom, boom. Get out of the tub. Get in bed. So the, you know, Besides blood sugar dysregulation, the other awesome way to really screw up your sleep is to have a television in your bedroom that you watch until you fall asleep. Bedrooms are made for sleep and for sex, and that's it. There should be no TV, no electronics in your bedroom. You should not be on your phone, on Instagram, or Facebook before bed. It is very disruptive to the neurotransmitters in your brain. It, it just kind of tells the body to still be awake. It's very stimulating. It is the opposite of sedating, which is what you need to be to fall asleep. So keep that in mind. What are you doing right before bed? Do you have a little nighttime ritual? Do you change into your PJs, have a little you know, warm bone broth, take a little bath, do a little journaling, reflect about your day, set intentions for the next day? cuddle with your partner, have some sex, make love. Do you do any of that? Or are you sitting on the couch until one of you falls asleep or you fall asleep on your own? Then you go up to bed with your phone um, and fall back asleep, you know, worse. Do you fall asleep in bed with the television on? That is very disruptive to your energy and will not give you the night's sleep that you deserve. You know, um, my... 
my, what would I call you, Beth? I, I want to say my assistant, my, she's a team member. She's a very important team member. We were discussing this Facebook Live just before on our call. And she told me that she cheats a little and she uses amber glasses at night. So, you know, I recommend, I think in my first book, Chill Out and Get Healthy, that you have lights out time. I, I know I recommend it. And yes, you can get pregnant as well. Um, but that, for at least, I would say, at least 30 minutes before bed, ideally an hour before bed, electronics go off, there is no television, you're getting into your nighttime ritual, and you're getting your body ready to go down for its really important, necessary sleep. So she said she cheats a little, she bought these amber glasses on Amazon, which cuts out all the blue light, and the blue light is what's very stimulating. So... If that resonates with you, um, <laughs> thanks, Beth. If that resonates with you, then that's another way to try. Or you can ease yourself in. Like, if you really like to watch a show that it's on from 10 to 11 and then you go to bed at 11, right, I'm disrupting your whole evening and maybe that's something you enjoy doing with your partner or by yourself and I don't want to take joy from you. So put on your amber glasses then um, or DVR and watch it the next night earlier, right? So just be a, a day behind on your show. That's another option. But... To really understand electronics are severely disrupting to our energy and our circadian rhythm. So ideally, there's zero electronics in the bedroom, including your phones. Don't come in with you. They, they charge in a charging station in your kitchen. Um, there's very little wires that run under your bed. Your alarm clock is a battery-operated alarm clock that doesn't have any plugs. So that your bedroom is literally a sanctuary, and it should be. Like, if sleep is an issue too, go buy yourself some really nice new sheets, some comfy pillows, a nice mattress topper. You know, make it a sanctuary. Sleep is divine, and it should feel divine, and it should make you, you should wake up feeling really rested and cozy. You know, I, I love my pillows, and, you know, every morning when I wake up, I go over a couple things I'm grateful for. Always in that list are these insanely comfortable bamboo pillows that we ordered on Amazon. I think they were not cheap, like $60 a pillow or something, but they're hypoallergenic too because my husband gets um, allergies to the, um, what are those called, the, the feathers. But so they are insanely comfortable. And it's like, and then we have this mattress cover pad from Coco Mat that's like all organic and makes me feel so good about everything. And it's so comfortable. It's like, I just want to lay there in my little cocoon and I'm so grateful. And we have, you know, the bedroom's very simple and it's like bright white color linens and I have these beautiful pillows and everything it is, it's like a sanctuary. And, you know, to, to think about it like that, like what environment are you sleeping in? Perhaps that's why you're not resting, resting as much as you can. So big things to take away. Blood sugar needs to be regulated all day long. You need to eat within the first 20 to 30 minutes of waking some protein. If you're having sleep problems, eat 20 to 30 minutes before bed. Again, a little bit of protein. I like the idea of the bone broth right before bed. It would be so calming, sedating. Try the magnesium oil. Add some of the essential oils, the lavender, the clary sage. Do some of the journaling. Let go of your demons, your heavy thoughts. Devil's pillow, that's the name of this point. So it's like you're going to sleep with your, you know, your devilish thoughts, your demonic thoughts. So stomach seven, it lays right over the masseter muscle, which is uh, what we clench with. Stomach seven is the acupuncture point. And the translation for the name of that point is devil's pillow. So if I have someone who grinds, I, I instantly know they have unresolved emotional things that they're really holding on to, and it's disrupting their sleep and the rest of their life. So journal, let that go, choose to let it go. Why are you holding on to it? Why do you need to carry these burdens? Do you believe you need to suffer? You don't need to suffer. You know, do you believe that... Getting less sleep means you'll be more successful or you work harder than everyone else. You know, really look into this. Like, what are your stories behind sleep, work, stress, you know, um, holding on to things? Like, you know, just really tap into that. My next book, Body Belief, that'll be out in um, maybe 10 months or so, is going to tap into all of that. And, and it's my hope that I'm going to continue with these Facebook Lives and, and share with you information from my previous books and from my forthcoming books and from everything I learn in the clinic because... You know, there's a lot of information, and um, and you want to get it from someone you trust, someone who, you know, has been, I've been in the clinic for 13 years working with clients, and I fi think I've really figured out what, what works and what doesn't, and, you know, and then also personally, I always practice what I preach. So, you know, just remember, sleep is mm, the most important piece to your health puzzle, 
And if something's just not working in your health and you can't figure out why, look to your sleep. That is the place to fix it. So let me see. I have some notes. I want to make sure I covered everything. Right, meditation, that's another thing I forgot to mention. Obviously, extremely important for quieting the mind. You could, in your baths before bed, meditate. You could just find meditation somewhere throughout your day. It will actually help regulate the stress hormones in your body, which will then impact positive sleep. So find time for meditation. I call it, you know, chill out and check in time. So just a couple minutes just to sit, close your eyes, breathe deeply. Sometimes just laying down in bed, taking 10 deep breaths will help you fall asleep. And by deep, I mean you're inhaling. It looks like this. It's it's literally like long, slow breaths so your belly rises. I want Don't stop your breath here. Go all the way down to your belly. Expand. Breathe in that air. And then let it out. It's almost like a count of four. It's like... You do 10 of those, you will be relaxed. Sometimes I'll just do that in the shower, right? I just take, what is that, 20 more seconds in the shower? Four times, oh, so eight, so 80 seconds in the shower extra to do those 10 deep breaths. Um, you're worthy of those two minutes. You really are, honey. You know, so think about that. Like, And then think about your bedroom. What kind of environment are you sleeping in? You know, bedrooms are for sleep and sex. They should be sanctuaries. They should not be electronic havens. You should definitely not watch television before you go to bed. Try the magnesium oil. It's awesome. Many of us are dealing with magnesium deficiencies that we don't even know about. So there's, you know, you can Google it, but there's a bunch of different symptoms that might resonate with you. So try the magnesium oil. It's a great way. Some of the essential oils like lavender or clary sage, bottom of your foot, just a couple drops. I, I like to, I get mine from mountainroseherbs.com. Everything's USDA certified organic. Those are the essential oils I use in my Amy Rout Beauty skincare line as well. Um, and so I think that's everything, guys. Um, so if you watch this at a later time than when we're live, post questions in the comment section below and I will get to you. If you want to know more about me, go to my website, amyraup.com. Um, and Rubio's Tea, good for magnesium. You know, I don't know the answer to that. Um, Liz, I will have to Google that. But if Rubio's tea has magnesium, then yes, it's a good source. <laughs> That's my answer. Um, but I actually don't know the answer to that. Um, there's many things that contain minerals, and minerals are usually magnesium. So, okay. Um, my cousin Lisa. Hi, Lisa. I love you. Um, and let's see. I'm going to sign off. And I'm going to let you guys post questions in the comment section below if anything comes up. And sending love to you all. Happy Thursday. If you're on the East Coast, get outside and enjoy some warm weather before we get a cold spell again. I'm going to go out for a run. And, um, okay, sending you all love. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for letting me come into your life for this past however many minutes it's been. All right. Ciao.